Hey everyone, the last time we made it to the netherworld is Keats. We're already familiar with the scenery, it's the story that's going to be more to our interest this time. Well, no. so he says, but just like Scarecrow, he warns us that there's fighting and doesn't tell us how to do it. Yep, for Keats, it's the other fairy over here that serves as the tutorial. I have no idea why they did that. But again, he can speak in brackets, which is really impressive. We already know about the portals, so let's just skip those. Pretty much a less detailed tutorial than he gave Ellen. And that's about all that he's got to say of our interest, so on to combat.
And so Keats enters combat with the same two folks that Ellen started with. But he's got this interesting aura surrounding him. And that, I believe, has to do with the transcension. He's got a third meter in his status bar up there. You can see the green one for health, the blue one for MC, and the red one that slowly fills up with yellow as we absorb ids. That's the transcension meter. When it fills up, we can turn into that beast you saw earlier and attack folks with Keats's own power rather than the folks he's absorbed. I figured I'd probably better come over here earlier this time so I don't have to refight everything in that second screen. But all that's here is a couple of Kilmulus. That kind of shows the first big difference between Ellen and Keats in combat style is that they'll meet different folks. Keats is never going to encounter a Henke. And, in fact, in his prologue, all he's ever going to see are the Poké and Kilmulus. Occasionally, I don't get the motion controls quite right. But oh well. It's still pretty easy stuff. And already I've got my three hit combo. Still waiting for that magical fourth. But I don't think I'm gonna get it. There's not that many poke in the prologue. Otherwise, the combat hasn't really changed all that much. There's one other kinda significant difference between the way Ellen and Keats fight, and you probably won't notice it unless you've actually played the game and particularly used some of the folks that you capture in later areas. See, when Ellen uses up all of her mental capacity, it recharges slowly but it recharges pretty much all the time. And you'll only really run out if you use a lot of it in a very short time. For Keats, it recharges all at once if he stops using folks for a few seconds. So with Keats, there's a little less danger of, say, depleting so much MC that you can't use the folk that you want to. With Ellen, sometimes you'll have to wait a few seconds in order to recover. Yeah, we learned how to do that from Scarecrow. And one final bit of tutorials. Only one new thing here. I don't think we'll ever see the fairies fight, and it's all just kind of background anyway to the main story. Speaking of which...
I guess the sun hasn't risen on Keats yet. So there you go. That's Keats's role in this whole thing. And I think now we know what the memento of the dead that we're looking for is, the photo in the ceramic doll. But now we got to find Suzette. So at this point, it's up to you guys. Do you want to see where Keats's story goes from here? Or should we rejoin Ellen on her search for her mother? Leave your votes in the thread, and I'll count them up and we'll decide which version of chapter one we're going to watch first. See you guys then.